We now fit the timing gears. The inlet and exhaust timing gears are identical. Standard timing is achieved when the exhaust camshaft's key faces towards the timing mark closest to the EX stamping and the inlet camshaft's key faces towards the timing mark closest to the IN stamping. The crankshaft timing gear is also located by a woodruff key. A spacer ring fits between the bearing and the crankshaft timing gear which has been lubricated and is now drifted into place after being carefully aligned so the key fits into the keyway cut in the gear. Left hand threaded nuts are loosely fitted to each camshaft and the three studs that hold the alternator stator in place are also fitted and subsequently tightened. The alternator lead passes from the timing chest to the outside world through a steel sleeve which is now screwed into place. The thread has been coated with hydraulic sealer to avoid an oil leak at this point. A little more thought from the designers would have made a lot of difference here. The sleeve cannot be fitted before the alternator stud is in place because the tip of the sleeve interferes with the hex at the stud's threaded end, stopping it from screwing into place. Trouble is, with the stud in place, you can't fit a ring spanner over the sleeve. Machine the flats off the hex and the sleeve could be fitted before the stud, allowing a ring spanner to easily tighten the sleeve into place first. With both camshaft timing marks roughly in the right place, the intermediate timing wheel is now introduced and manoeuvred into the correct position. Timing marks are checked for alignment and then the spacer washer and retaining clip are fitted to ensure the intermediate wheel is held in place. A spare timing gear is used to stop the camshafts from turning so the two left handed threaded nuts can both be tensioned to 75 foot pound. A tension wrench that works for left handed threads is required at this point. There is not a lot of nut for the socket to engage with on this model so hold it firmly against the cam gear to avoid slipping off the nut as tension is applied. Studs are now fitted to the crankcase mouth using lock nuts to tighten them securely. There are three different studs so be sure to fit them in their correct position. The four studs with large shoulders are fitted almost in line with the connecting rods for cylinder 1 and 3. Long straight studs are fitted in the centre two positions. I recommend you use sealant on these threads as the holes they screw into are open at the bottom and engine oil has been known to travel up the threads causing leakage. Longer straight studs are located through the two hollow dowel points and shorter studs fit fore and aft these two. Piston rings have been fitted to each piston and they are now fitted to their respective conrods. Make sure the larger valve recess in the top of each piston faces the rear. The gudgeon pin should be a firm fit. A circlip secures the gudgeon pin at each end. Always use new circlips as you definitely do not want these to come off. Protect the pistons from being damaged against the threaded studs. The centre piston is fitted to its connecting rod and plastic tubing is pushed onto the threaded studs to both guide the conrod into place on the crankshaft journal and protect the crankshaft journal from being damaged during that process. Cam followers are lubricated and fitted into position and an o-ring is slipped onto the groove on each one so they can't drop into the crankcase as the barrels are lowered into place. Piston rings are spaced appropriately around the piston circumference and ring compressors fitted to assist with assembly. The centre piston is pushed into place and the ring compressor removed. An extra set of hands makes lowering the barrels onto the two remaining pistons a much easier task.
ring compressors are removed and the barrels are encouraged into place. The centre piston is tapped down so the conrod engages with the crankshaft journal. Plastic tubing is removed and the big end cap fitted into place through the sump opening. Both nuts are fitted and tensioned up to 22 foot pound as were the outer two previously. Barrel base nuts and washers are fitted and secured tightly. Twelve pillar studs are fitted loosely into the barrels. Then they're quickly screwed into place with the aid of a handy power tool. A nut is screwed part way onto a bolt which is then locked against the end of each pillar stud in order to tighten each one securely. In the workshop, new valve guides are fitted to the cylinder head. Here we demonstrate how this is done. Valve guides endure high temperatures during engine operation and an interference fit is required to keep them securely in place. The head is heated and the valve guides refrigerated to aid the fitting process. After new guides are fitted, the valve seats are cut to ensure alignment with the new guides and an airtight seal with the valves. The head is placed onto a very handy stand that makes fitting the valves, valve springs and collets very easy. Standard outer valve springs give a progressive load and the closer coil should be fitted towards the bottom. Stand makes a tricky job much easier.